speaking of DDoS attacks, let's go back. Uh, Amazon says it mitigated the largest DDoS attack ever recorded. An attack with a previously unseen volume of 2.3 uh, terabytes per second, which is crazy. This is over at TheVerge.com. So, um, I mean, I, I've been using Amazon recently, and I didn't, I didn't notice any... Any downtime? Was there was there downtime associated with this? There wasn't, and that's kind of the amazing part about this. Uh, you know, there was an article that was submitted for last week's show that I passed on because it wasn't confirmed yet about how the United States may be under a large DDoS attack, and it turns out that it wasn't the United States as a whole. It was mostly focused on Amazon. So I'm glad we waited until this week. Uh, Amazon has not said exactly what was targeted, so it may have been a particular Amazon service. Or it may have been a particular Amazon customer, somebody who ho was hosting their infrastructure on Amazon. So, for example, uh, Netflix still has a really big presence on Amazon. Uh, several other sites like that. Uh, I think it's is it Twitter that still has a lot of presence on Amazon. So, it, you know, it may have been one of them that was targeted. But they broke the previous record. The previous record was actually a 1.7 terabit attack that Netscout Arbor was able to mitigate. Uh, in this case, Amazon was receiving a consistent 2.3 terabits of traffic flooding into their network, and they were able to withstand that. They have a huge amount of bandwidth, and their Amazon Shield was able to detect and block a lot of this stuff. So that was really impressive that they were able to do it. Um, they did provide a little bit of details that this was actually the result of a reflection attack, and they were targeting LDAP servers, most likely Active Directory servers, that they were uh, they had formulated a way to be able to send a forged packet at a CLDAP server, and that server would reply with more data than was sent to it, and they would just set a falsified source address so it would all get sent over to Amazon. And it ended up generating a huge amount of, ta uh, of uh, traffic. Amazon said that on average, 99% of the attacks they receive are 43 gigabits or smaller. But in this case, when you're talking about 2.3 terabits per second of traffic, that's a huge, huge DDoS. This is uh, an amplif amplification attack very similar to the Memcached uh, ones that, that GitHub had to fight against, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of different providers out there who have worked really hard to secure that, you know, to, to make... Memcache is, is already a kind of a sensitive service as it is, so a lot of people it brought that onto their radar and got them to start paying a lot more attention and securing that service better. I feel like this was maybe perpetrated by Amazon itself to <laughs> show how robust their system was. So, you know, look at us, man. We got hit with the largest DDoS in the ever world has ever seen. We just took it like it was nothing. Kept on rocking. You didn't. You could buy books and and rent movies and stuff, and you, you know, know. It, it would be a great marketing play. Yeah, it, Peter's already he's got his little. It head sounds there, like right? a marketer went, "Hey, so here's a up. We got to figure out how this Amazon Shield works. We got to let people know about it. <laughs> Are you ready? What we're gonna do? You got a bunch of them LDAP servers running. All right, here's what we're gonna do: amplification attack. Let's bring ourselves down, but not really. We're gonna use the shield, and then it's gonna be." So for a moment, I thought, all right, well, you know, maybe we could release a press release on Monday and say that Techne.do resisted an eight terabits attack. Yeah. And, and, you know, who would know? But uh, you actually can see the traffic on the backbones, you know, the overall network traffic. D doesn't mean Amazon didn't cause it themselves. They could have, right? But there is, a, you know, it is documented that a huge amount of traffic was sent that way. Uh, and independent auditors were able to see that as well. Well, originally they thought it was an attack on the U.S., but maybe it was an attack by the U.S. Because, you know, Trump and Bezos have not uh, seen <laughs> So. It's going to be the most amazing attack. You know what it was? I bet it was huge. those 5G towers. Yeah. Oh, it's probably 5G. Oh, yeah. Didn't even think about that. Golly. Nailed 5G it. towers. Nailed it. Not this Nailed one because it. it's burning. First they cause COVID, and now they're hacking stuff. Well, we got to ask Mike Weber if they can make 5G towers burn remotely. Listen, you just got to get that, that USB key. You're good to go. Is there a heating element in a 5G Amazon tower? bought a bunch <laughs> of them bad boys. That Jeff Bezos got some money. Yeah. Because it's got to heat up the COVID before it sends it out. Yeah, True. yeah. Because if you don't properly bake it, COVID, you can't get people to catch it. COVID yeah. is a dish best served warm. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow, like bad skin. Oh man, I tell you, I feel compelled to say all of that was lies. Everybody listening <laughs> to this point, all of that is lies. Next to somebody's going to have time. We'll they're going to slap this. that together. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a cut together political campaign and be like, "Look at here, Techne.do confirms." <laughs> I'm like, no, that's. 
Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Dominican IT news site. <laughs> <laughs> Technado claims that uh, 5G towers have heating elements. And, and now, we, now we have intercontinental ballistic missiles on the way to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.